On the question of what's really motivating this project and why we're revisiting questions about how to shape China's behavior, uh, at the bottom line, uh, what we're seeing today is that uh, China, in terms of several elements of its national power and bureaucracies, are engaging in activities that are altering the territorial and administrative status quo of the East China Sea and the South China Sea in ways that are likely to cause uh, high levels of instability, both in the short term, but as they accrue over time, perhaps more importantly in the long term. Now, the reason this matters is because uh, for several decades, the United States has had a theory of its China policy. Uh, we've argued that uh, this policy ought to have three elements, um, an engagement element of uh, bi having close bilateral relations with China that would help to uh, shape its behavior over time, as well as a binding element that sought to integrate China into the international community, whether in uh, international institutions like the WTO uh, or other uh, regional uh, arrangements. Um, and then, of course, there's a balancing component through which we've tried to strengthen our deterrence with allies and partners, as well as through our own unilateral military capabilities in ways that would uh, deter China from engaging in the types of destabilizing activities that we're seeing today. The problem, of course, is that uh, it's safe to say at this point that that theory is not bearing out in terms of what would be required to shape Chinese behavior and prevent it from engaging in these destabilizing uh, behaviors. And so one of the things we're trying to do here at CNS is look more closely at the balancing component, at the deterrence component, and see in what ways the United States can more effectively shape Chinese behavior away from uh, these behaviors in, its, in the maritime domain and what amounts to these revisionist behaviors. And at the, at the core of that is a question of cost imposition strategies and how to make the continuation of this type of behavior unattractive to uh, decision makers and bureaucracies within the Chinese system who currently seem to be pressing ahead with these behaviors uh, regardless of American foreign policy.